Hello everybody, Paige here, guy with a stolen bike. My bike got stolen a couple of months ago, but luckily I live in Montreal, and anyone living in Montreal gets to benefit from this. The Bixies, the amazing public bike share system of Montreal. So I thought, you know what I could do, instead of uh, buying a new bike, maybe I can just ride a Bixie. I already have a winter bike, so winter bike in winter, Bixie in the summer, problem solved. I've won, I won thieves, you didn't get me, you didn't get me because I have the Bixies. Thank you Bixie. Mwah. Bixies have a name of a bike share system in Montreal. It was founded in the late 2000s by the city and the first few years were pretty rough. We had bankruptcies, we had disputes with the software developer, and all of this was politically uncomfortable for the city to manage. So in the end, the system got split into the operator of the system, Bixie, which is still owned and run by the city, and PBSC, which is a private enterprise that manufactures and distributes these to cities all over the world, New York, London, and of course, Montreal, which is kind of like its home testing ground. I really applaud the city for being willing to be entrepreneurial and try out stuff that you normally think of as private sector. And I'm gonna get into this in depth in a later video. It's really, really fascinating. I could talk about it for ages. I'm looking for a sponsor, so if you have any money, I would, I would like to make that video get in contact. So my experience with Bixies actually goes way back. Before I got my bike, and when I first moved to Montreal, this was the way that I used to get around town. So I knew that it worked pretty well. I used to ride into work in the morning and you park your Bixie and you only pay about $100 a year, which is a serious benefit. Anyone who owns a bike knows that you're typically gonna be spending at least that each year just in maintenance if you're riding it regularly. So Bixies are already a great deal when it comes to maintenance, but their biggest benefit is probably their upfront cost and that cost that you are bearing when they get stolen because bikes get stolen all the time. Basically, when you park your Bixie, as long as it clicks into the lock and you hear it go beep, you can now just enjoy your light. You don't have to worry about it, you know? It's not like a regular bike where you're like, oh, it's locked up to a bike stand, but it's a pretty dodgy neighborhood. Oh, I need to go back the next day and collect it. I hope it's still there. Besides from that, a Bixie is a very distinct bike. I don't think that there's much of a market for stolen Bixies. Uh, it's the police, I found you a stolen Bixie. Oh, thank you very much. I'm just gonna return this to the rack so I don't get fined $500 or whatever it is. You obviously can keep these all day. I actually have a friend who came to Montreal and took the Bixie overnight and parked it behind a house. Like they don't understand that the point of this is it's a 45 minute bike ride bike. And they think, oh, it's like a bike rental. I've rented the bike for three days. And that's a bit of a kind of thing that can catch a tourist. But other than that, I'd say it's pretty clear that Bixies are pretty rarely stolen. And unlike the dockless systems where you see tons of bikes dumped into waterways, you'll rarely see this with the Bixies because everyone's really highly motivated to get it back in the dock so that that bill is off their credit card and they can just enjoy the rest of their evening. Bixies are really well-designed bikes. They're a comfortable ride. Their tires are very resistant to slipping or getting punctures. They're safe. They go about the speed that you'd want to go when cruising around the city anyway. Not too fast and actually not too slow. I've ridden one this whole summer and I didn't have a hard time keeping up with my friends on traditional road bikes while we were moving around town. The system used to operate on keys, which I really miss. Anyone from Bixie is watching, please give us the option to pay for a key. They are so useful. It's really nice to be able to have a key that I can give to someone who's visiting for the weekend. I'm accountable for if the bike gets stolen or broken, but I can give them the key for the weekend if they don't have data when they're coming from another place and just say, yeah, you put it in the hole, take it out, the Bixie will come out. The app has all the app stuff, you know, oh, data's not going or I don't know, it's loading and it just won't it just, the circle shows, and it, sometimes you just can't get a bike out with it. I don't really know why. I really wish that they would just let you pay a premium $20 extra to have a copy of a key. I don't care if that's a profit-making thing for the Bixie people. Please bring back the keys. It's fucking annoying not having that as an option. Anyway, the Bixie app is good, especially compared to other systems where you don't even have like the GPS integrated in, but yeah really would appreciate if they still have the key option. Some people still have keys, like the keys are becoming kind of a precious commodity, you know, like don't lose your membership with that key, you know, like there's not many out there anymore. My brother's got a key. I don't know where my key went. Someone took the fucking key. Whoever has my key, return my key. Recently in the last couple of years, Bixie really took off. The pandemic was great for cycling, as I'm sure most people realize. It's a good outdoor activity 
when gyms were closed and that sort of thing. So bikes got really expensive and hard to get and Bixies stayed the same price and so lots of people just decided that they'd get a Bixie membership. But what was really supercharging this transition is an innovation that Bixie implemented in 2018 with a pilot of 20 bikes. And this is where Bixie really shines and it makes all the difference. In the same way that it sucks to lose your $250 bike, it really blows to lose your $5,000 e-bike. Not having that potential loss of such a valuable asset is totally worth it. The benefits to Bixie and the reason that these programs are adopting e-bikes are mostly down to this issue with distribution of bikes. You'll see in any city that has a bike share scheme that bikes tend to find themselves clustered at the bottom of hills around popular destinations. So they have to employ these teams of people to go around throwing them into the back of trucks and carting them back up the top of hills. With e-bikes, people A, prefer taking them. So in Bixie's own data, they show that 70% of people will take an e-bike over a traditional gray Bixie, even though they cost 19 cents per minute. And the second thing is, when you get an e-bike, you don't think, oh no, it's up a hill. It has no bearing on it. So what's happening over time is there's more and more e-bikes being introduced to the system. So they theoretically should require less labor. However, there's this new job of charging e-bike. They have these little changeable batteries and they kind of change the cartridge on the e-bike. So they had to have people driving around to replace the batteries on the 20 or whatever e-bikes they had in that first season. But what's really winning out for Bixie in this docked versus dockless battle is that they're starting to introduce charging bike racks. So these are stations that have this charging system. When you put your bike in, it charges pretty quickly actually. I tried it on a bike that was fairly drained. I was kind of surprised it was charged a couple of hours later. And as they introduce more stations, you'll notice in Montreal that the stations that are on the periphery of the network tend to be charging stations. So gradually over time, it's you know one in every 20 stations will charge the e-bikes. Now it's maybe one in every 10. And you can see in a few years time that you'll have enough charging stations that you'd barely really require any more charging people to drive around with vans. So theoretically, hopefully, you end up in a situation where the only people that they have to hire as staff out on the road are maintenance people who are just going out there and fixing spokes and flat tires and that sort of thing. So all of this has resulted in Bixie producing a surprise revenue for the city. Now Bixie's not profitable, they're still subsidized, but each year the city gives them $2 million or whatever, and Bixie keep exceeding their revenue targets and end up just having extra cash, which is kind of cool. They're reinvesting it in the stations at the moment, which is exactly what I want. So the network's growing really quickly, basically because it's more cost effective than the government expected, which honestly, that doesn't usually happen when the government does things. So now we have the system, we have all the e-bikes, we get to reap the rewards as a city. And those rewards are substantial. And you notice it the most when people come to visit from other places, like my friend Scott, who is gonna walk into the frame right now and sit down like on the little seat. Good Scott. <laughs> so, <laughs> First thing I would say is that e-bikes are a gateway to biking. Absolutely. I think for many people it's the difference between riding or not riding. I'm sure there's many people who've visited Montreal and then gone home to wherever they're from and gone either our city should build a system like this or how much is an e-bike? Maybe I should buy one. It's like being exposed to an illicit drug. It's very exciting and highly addictive. Yeah, bike pilled. It was when the e-bixies came in that you could finally get tourists on them. You know, I would have a hard time convincing people. I'd be like, hey, we should try this. You know, do you want to ride a Bixie? And you could tell they, uh, they were, I was forcing them to do it. They weren't really happy about it. They would rather have walked. They'd get sweaty. With the e-Bixies, you see the smile on their face. They're having a good time. And when you talk to them two days later, they've just ridden to see you on an e-Bixie. They never did that when it was just for like manual Bixies. Yeah, I spent a few years policing in Auckland City in the downtown area. Uh, I got to work with some groups who were trying to set up something similar, uh, but they went for a dockless bike share system and they really, really struggled with having their bikes uh, stolen and ending up all over the place. I think in the first six months they lost two or three hundred bikes. They had teams roaming in vans 24 seven trying to find them. So people were having a laugh and seeing how far they could get them. They ended up on different islands. It was, they were just in pretty far flung places. It 
was so close to being an awesome thing for the city, um, but it just didn't quite work out. Uh, availability was really hard. You couldn't reliably depend on the, our rental bike system being there when you got up to go to work in the morning. So whereas every time we've gone anywhere here, just every dock's been at least half full of bikes ready to go. You burn people once and they, they won't come back to it, I think. This summer is really actually the worst I've seen it in terms of the distribution, but there's still usually one or two bikes. They have a points system that um, I polled my audience on Twitter and found that uh, it's like 35% of people are influenced by the points. So it just kind of nudges people towards like not taking the last bike from a rack or maybe going like another block to take one from a full rack. I wish the rewards were a bit more generous, like they're not easy to cash in. They give you a code and I've never figured out how to use the code. I don't know what it's for. I like, they like put it in the app and I've like gone through the app's interface. I don't know, just like tack automatically a free month onto everyone's plan when you when you make whatever number of points or something. The other thing I know is a struggle in some markets. I noticed in New Zealand when I was there, all the bike shares and the scooter shares had this like helmet locking system attached. And it just seems like, well, that helmet's probably gonna get stolen every two weeks, you know? Yeah, they did. They'd, they'd, people wouldn't necessarily thread them through the bike lock when it was getting locked up like they were supposed to. Mm. And they'd just clip them on or dangle them over the handlebar. And so they'd get thrown around by hooligans. These munters have been causing havoc in Christchurch for years. PC still requires helmets and it's just one of these things where, God, how do you say this? It's pretty brutal. People riding bikes is good for the overall health of the society and we need to accept a few people getting brain damage. <laughs> there is a research on this that shows that when you don't require helmets you increase the number of riders enough that you cause a kind of um, critical mass of cyclists um, and improvement in infrastructure that actually makes it safer in the long run. But it does seem to me like after living here, if you're the sort of person who's nervous about getting hurt, you can wear a helmet. And half the people I know do. I wear a helmet in winter. I don't usually wear a helmet in summer. But if I'm biking like a real long way, like if I'm doing a whole day ride, I will wear a helmet because you're on the road that much. If you can remove that strict helmet requirement, you make it so much more cost effective to set up a bike share scheme. Imagine if a transit system had to put helmets on people every time they got into a bus and what an expense that would be, right? So yeah, it's one of those things if you're looking at setting up a bike share scheme, you should probably do it in tandem with, even the, the law could be as specific as if you're on a bike share, you don't have to wear a helmet, right? Yeah, there are exemptions to things like seatbelt wearing for taxi drivers because there's oh, yeah? a greater public good reason for that. It's one thing to share a bike, but it's quite another to share a helmet. And then the make or break for many people, I've no, I've spent all that time doing my hair for work. Yeah. It's, it's, that's huge for a lot of people. That'd be a big deal. Ute would never ride a bike if he, uh, if he had to wear a helmet. So yeah, you can ride a Bixi and get around. But I have a feeling that most people, if you don't ride bikes and then you ride a Bixi and you're like, oh, I like this, you'll eventually find yourself wanting to ride a bike when a Bixi won't work. You're needing to carry some cargo, you're needing to go visit somewhere where there isn't a Bixi, or you know, you really get into biking and you're like, oh, I want to do a bike tour. You know, maybe I can sell my car. You'll find yourself limited by the Bixis. So yeah, as you can see, it's a lot. There's no rear rack which I get why they did. They don't want people like riding along with friends. So it's made of this like material that gives and it just, and it hits the wheel. And if someone sits on it, the bike won't go forward because it acts like a brake. So the design is great, but the utility bikes, the working bikes of Montreal almost always have um, a back rack and you'll see they'll have like a milk crate strapped in there and stuff. It is so nice to be able to walk out of a supermarket and just throw it in the back like a pickup almost, you know? The basket up the front, it's a really clever design. You can, it's amazing what you can fit in here, but it's still not enough. So for those reasons, I was happy that um, Fred contacted me to tell me he had fished a bike out of a lake. So I am going out there to grab it. I don't know what this bike's gonna be. I'm very excited to see though, what happens when you pull a bike out of a river in Bocheville um, and can you rescue that bike and actually ride it? Till next time. So you'd only really get one stolen if you say had it parked in a uh, in a park and didn't return it to the rack. Are you ever coming in? Yeah, I bought my cube. I don't know. I just kind of thought it would naturally make sense.
you then have to worry that maybe someone's going to come along and nick the thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't feel that one. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Scott. <laughs>